All right, buckle up because we're diving headfirst into the future. Tesla's cooking up. Oh, you mean that we robot presentation Elon Musk just dropped? The one and only. We've got robo taxes roaming the streets, cities getting total makeovers, and even, wait for it, Robot buddies hanging out in our living rooms. Sounds like a sci-fi movie marathon waiting to happen. You said it. But before we get lost in a world of futuristic daydreams, we're going to break down the highlights and see what's actually possible. Love that approach. Yeah. Cut through the hype and give it to us straight. Exactly. So where do we even start with this one? I mean, Musk throws out so many wild ideas. It's like... It's like he raided a prop house from every sci-fi movie ever made. And then decided to build it all. But, you know, there's a method to the madness. Like, remember how he kits things off? Oh, absolutely. He goes straight for that Blade Runner vibe, but with a twist. Exactly. It's like, yeah, flying cars and all that jazz. But hold the dystopian gloom, please. We're here for the fun gadgets, the cool tech that makes life better. Makes you wonder if he's got a secret lab somewhere. It's just whipping these things up. Right. But, you know, it's brilliant marketing because it taps into this universal desire for a more exciting future. For sure. He's selling a vision, an experience, not just a product. And speaking of selling, did you catch how he addresses this major pain point we all feel? You mean like how to get our hands on a robot butler yesterday? Well, that too, but I was thinking more about the whole wasted time thing. Like how much of our lives we spend stuck in traffic, just getting from point A to point B. Ah, uh, yeah, the daily commute struggle. I feel that. Exactly. But Musk, he flips the script. He's like, what if that time wasn't wasted? What if it was an opportunity? Okay, now I'm intrigued. Turn my morning commute into... What, a spa day? Hey, with Tesla, anything's possible. But seriously, he's talking about transforming those dead hours into productive or enjoyable time. Okay, so imagine this. I'm stuck in traffic, but instead of stressing, I'm, like, catching up on work, reading a book, maybe even squeezing in a quick nap. See, you're getting it. He actually compares owning an autonomous Tesla to having a comfortable little lounge that just happens to take you places. Suddenly rush hour doesn't sound so bad. Right. And the best part, this whole robo-taxi thing could be crazy affordable. Like he throws out numbers as low as 20 cents a mile. Wait, seriously? That's like cheaper than a bus ticket. Well, that's the operating cost. He, he does say more realistically like 30, 40 cents a mile once you factor in everything else. Okay, still not bad at all. If those numbers hold up, it could revolutionize transportation as we know it. No doubt about it. And you know Musk, he's always got another trick up his sleeve. He even suggests this whole business model where people could manage fleets of robo-taxes. Wait, what? Like, instead of driving for Uber, you're managing a team of robot drivers. That's the idea. Call it the car shepherd gig economy. Classic Musk. <laughs> always thinking outside the box. But let's be real, this is all still very much in the future, right? I mean, when are we talking about actually seeing these robo-taxis on the road? Well, if you believe Musk, and that's a big, if he claims fully autonomous, no driver-needed Teslas are coming to Texas and California next year. Next year. As in 2025. You heard right. Though he did specify that applies to the models 3, Y, S, and X. Ah, uh, so the Cybertruck folks, they gotta wait a bit longer, huh? Seems that way. But, you know, even if he's off by a year or two, the fact that they're even this close is pretty amazing. No doubt. It all comes down to the data, right? Tesla's got millions of cars on the road, all equipped with those sensors collecting information every mile they drive. It's like a massive real-world AI training ground. Exactly. Every Tesla out there is basically teaching the system how to drive better, how to handle different situations, how to anticipate potential hazards. So the more data they collect the smarter the AI gets and the safer these self-driving cars become. That's the theory. Mm -hmm. And Musk is putting a lot of faith in it. He's adamant that autonomous Teslas will be far safer than human drivers. He actually throws out a pretty bold claim saying they can be 10 times safer. <laughs> 10 times. Now, that's a big statement to make. I mean, we'll have to see the data to back it up. But the potential is definitely there. It's both exhilarating and a little unnerving, isn't it? I mean, on the one hand, imagine a world with fewer accidents, less traffic congestion, maybe even shorter commute times. Signing up. Yeah. But then there's that other part of your brain thinking, okay, but what if something goes wrong? What if the AI makes a mistake? It's the classic robot uprising scenario playing out in the back of your mind. Exactly. It's like, do we really trust machines to make life or death decisions on the road? It's a question we'll have to grapple with as this technology becomes more advanced and more widespread. But hey, at least Musk is acknowledging the potential risks. 
True, he did touch on the whole AI going rogue thing, mm. even suggesting there's like an 80% chance of a good outcome. 80%. I guess that's somewhat reassuring, but then again, it also means there's a 20% chance of things going very, very wrong. But look at us getting ahead of ourselves. We haven't even talked about the robo-event yet. Oh yeah, the robo -event. The robo-event. It's like a robo-taxi, but bigger. Think of it as a self-driving van for people and cargo. So like a futuristic party bus. I mean, it could be. He actually suggested calling it the robo bomb catch here. Yeah, right. definitely rolls off the tongue a bit better. Right. But name aside, this thing is designed to move people and stuff around within a city. Imagine, like, a fleet of these things replacing delivery trucks and public transportation. It's like he's trying to reinvent the whole concept of urban mobility. Exactly. And you know what's even crazier? Just when he thought it couldn't get any wilder, he hits us with... Optimus Prime. Wait, as in the leader of the Autobots, is he bringing Transformers to life now? Not quite, but close. Optimus is Tesla's humanoid robot. And this year, he didn't just talk about it, he actually showed off a new prototype. No way. Yeah. And what can this robot do? Walk the dog, do the dishes? Well, it's not quite there yet, but it can walk around and perform some basic tasks. Musk's vision, though, is much grander. He sees a future where these things are in our homes, helping with chores, providing companionship, even becoming our friends. Okay, hold up. Did he really just say friends? Like, with a robot? Yeah, he did. And that's where things start to get really interesting. And by interesting, you mean both fascinating and a little creepy. Exactly. I mean, it's one thing to have a robot vacuum cleaner, but a robot that can fetch you a beer and tell you jokes? That's next level stuff. Yeah. And it begs the question, are we ready for that? Mm. Are we ready for a world where robots aren't just tools, but companions, maybe even friends? It's a lot to unpack. And honestly, it might be too much for one deep dive. You're telling me. We've barely scratched the surface of Musk's robot revolution. I know, right? But hey, that just means we'll have to dive deeper another time. And the price tag on this robot buddy. Musk throws out a number that's honestly kind of shocking. Let me guess, like a cool million bucks for your own personal R2-D2? Not even close. He's saying it could eventually cost around $20,000 to $30,000. Hey, hold on. You're telling me I could get a robot that can, what, fold my laundry for the price of a decent car? That's the claim. And that's where things get really interesting, because now we're not talking about some luxury item for the super rich. If those numbers hold up, robots could become as commonplace as cars, TVs, smartphones. Okay, now my brain's officially in overdrive. Imagine a world where pretty much anyone can afford a robot that can do their chores, run errands, maybe even keep them company. It's mind-blowing, right? And it forces us to confront some really big questions about the future of work, the economy, even our social structures. I mean, on the one hand, it sounds kind of utopian. Imagine all the free time people would have if robots took over those mundane, everyday tasks. Right. More time for family, for hobbies, for pursuing your passions. But then there's that other side of the coin. What happens to all the people whose jobs are now being done by robots? It's the classic automation dilemma. Increased efficiency and productivity, but at what cost? Exactly. And how do we prepare for that kind of massive shift in the job market? What happens to all those truck drivers, factory workers, even cashiers? Do they all become robot repair technicians? It's a challenge we can't afford to ignore. And it's something that needs to be part of the conversation from the get-go. We can't just unleash millions of robots into the world without considering the potential consequences for real people. Totally agree. We need to figure out how to make this transition as smooth as possible, how to ensure that everyone benefits from these advancements, not just a select few. But okay, let's take a step back for a second, because as mind blowing as all of this is, we also got to remember, this is still Elon Musk we're talking about. Meaning, take it all with a grain of salt. Exactly. The guy's a visionary, no doubt, but his track record for meeting deadlines, let's just say it's a bit optimistic. Remember the whole Cybertruck saga, uh -huh. years of delays. <laughs> So yeah, I'm not holding my breath for a robot butler next Christmas. Right. But even if only half of what he's proposing actually comes to fruition, it's clear that Tesla is playing a different game. They're not just building cars, they're trying to build the future. It's true. They've got that go big or go home mentality. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I kind of love them for it. They make you believe that anything is possible. And that's what makes these presentations so captivating. It's not just about product launches, it's about sparking our imaginations, pushing the boundaries of what we think is possible. And you know what? Sometimes that's exactly what we need. A little dose of what if. 
a reminder that the future isn't set in stone. Mm -hmm. We can shape it, mold it, even disrupt it entirely. Now you're talking. But let's bring it back down to Earth for a bit. Musk did go into some pretty fascinating detail about the tech behind all of this, especially when it comes to the autonomous driving stuff. Oh, yeah, the AI and computer vision stuff. Mm -hmm. It's mind-boggling how much data they're collecting from all those Teslas on the road. It's like having millions of robot spies constantly observing, analyzing, learning. And that data is the key. It's what fuels the AI, allows it to adapt and improve over time. So instead of just following pre-programmed rules, these self-driving systems are actually learning from experience, like getting better every mile they drive. Precisely. And that's a game changer. Because it means these systems aren't limited by what we already know. They can potentially surpass human capabilities, become even better drivers than us mere mortals. Okay, now I'm picturing my future self getting schooled by a robot driver. Hey, Grandpa, maybe let the car handle this intersection. You almost hit that fire hydrant. I can see the headlines now. Robot drivers, saving us from ourselves. But in all seriousness, the potential here is huge. And it's not just limited to driving. Wait, you're saying this AI tech could be used for other things? Musk hinted at it. Apparently, they're developing this incredibly powerful AI inference computer, and autonomous driving is just the tip of the iceberg. Okay, now you've officially piqued my curiosity. What else could this thing do? Write novels? Compose symphonies? Your guess is as good as mine at this point. But the possibilities are pretty much endless, and that's what makes this whole thing so exciting. We're witnessing the birth of a new era in technology, one where the lines between humans and machines are becoming increasingly blurred. It's both exhilarating and a little terrifying, right? Like we're stepping into the unknown and there's no turning back. Exactly. And that brings us back to Optimus, the humanoid robot that seems to have walked straight out of a science fiction movie. This is where things get really interesting really fast. Because now we're not just talking about machines doing our bidding, following our commands. Musk is talking about robots as companions, as friends, maybe even something more. He's venturing into uncharted territory. And it raises all sorts of ethical and philosophical questions that we as a society need to grapple with. Right, like, can a machine truly be a friend? Can it understand human emotions, feel empathy, provide genuine companionship? And what happens when those lines get blurred? What happens when we start forming emotional attachments to machines that are programmed to mimic human behavior? Are we headed for a world where people prefer the company of robots over other humans? It's a question that science fiction writers have been exploring for decades. And now it's becoming increasingly relevant in the real world. It's a lot to wrap our heads around, but it's also a conversation we can't afford to ignore. Absolutely. We need to be thinking about these issues now before they become impossible to manage, because the future is coming, whether we're ready for it or not. And speaking of the future, there's one more aspect of Musk's presentation that we haven't even touched on yet. We've talked a lot about the exciting stuff, the mind-blowing potential of all this tech. Yeah, the robot butlers, the self-driving road trips. Exactly. But we got to talk about the elephant in the room, the part that maybe keeps some people up at night. You mean like, what happens to all the jobs? Bingo. Musk talks a big game about new opportunity, you know, those car shepherd gigs. But what about all the jobs that these robots, these self-driving cars are going to replace. It's a valid concern, no doubt about it. Truck drivers, taxi drivers, factory workers, even surgeons are starting to see robots muscle in on their turf. It's like we're standing on the edge of a technological tsunami. And the question is, are we building strong enough boats to weather the storm? Exactly. We need to be thinking about retraining programs, safety nets, ways to support the people whose livelihoods are going to be most impacted by these changes. Because technological progress shouldn't mean leaving millions of people behind. It's about lifting everyone up, yeah. finding new opportunities, new ways to thrive in this rapidly changing world. I'm with you on that. We can't just bury our heads in the sand and pretend this isn't happening. We got to be proactive, have those tough conversations, and figure out solutions that work for everyone. Absolutely. And those conversations, they need to extend beyond the economic impact, too. We're talking about robots that could potentially be caring for our kids, our aging parents. Yeah. That's a whole other level of responsibility of trust that we're talking about. No doubt. It's like, how do you program ethics into a machine? Can you teach a robot empathy, compassion, those uniquely human qualities that are so essential to caregiving? And who decides what those ethical guidelines are? Who sets the boundaries? These are questions we don't have clear answers to yet, but they're questions we need to be asking, debating, grappling with as a society right now. 
Because once this genie's out of the bottle, there's no putting it back in. Exactly. We're talking about shaping the future, not just reacting to it. And that's both exciting and, let's be honest, a little intimidating. Absolutely. It's like we're standing at a crossroads. One path leads to a future where technology empowers us, frees us from drudgery, creates new possibilities. And the other path, well, let's just say those sci-fi movies about robot overlords start to feel a little too real. <laughs> okay, no need to bring Terminator into this. But I see your point. It all comes down to choices, right? The choices we make today will determine what that future looks like. Exactly. Do we approach these advancements with a sense of wonder, of collaboration? Or do we let fear and uncertainty drive us towards a more dystopian outcome? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And I wish I had all the answers, but maybe that's the point. Maybe there are no easy answers, no predetermined path. Maybe the most important thing is that we're having this conversation in the first place. Yeah. That we're engaging with these complex issues, challenging our own assumptions, and demanding that technology serves humanity, not the other way around. Well said. It's been quite a riot, hasn't it? From robotaxis to robot buddies, we've covered a lot of ground, explored some truly mind-bending ideas. And I think that's what I love about these deep dives. They challenge us to think bigger, to look beyond the horizon and imagine possibilities we might never have considered otherwise. And sometimes those possibilities, they can be a little scary, but they can also be incredibly inspiring. Absolutely, because they remind us that we're not just passive passengers on this journey into the future. We have a say in how this story unfolds. We have the power to shape the world we want to live in, the world we want to leave for future generations. And that's a powerful thought to end on. So to everyone listening, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Keep those questions coming, keep those conversations going, and most importantly, keep your minds open to the possibilities that lie ahead. Because the future is what we make it. And on that note, until next time.